is a fresh source of irritation is a new sense. Now, David, we were having a little bit of a chat before the show, as, uh, as we do, and mm -hmm. you were telling me about your book, Puzzled, which is going to be published in the UK. That's right. But while they're getting the text kind of just sorted for the UK version, <laughs> sort they're having trouble with a particular phrase because they just don't know it there. What, no. what is that? Well, in fact, uh, when I use the phrase Blind Freddy, so Blind Freddy could see, for example, that your tie is red, I had presumed it was a universal uh, piece of idiom. But uh, the English editor thought, uh, is Freddie your uncle? Who's Blind Freddie? <laughs> Who is this fellow so with the vision problem? <laughs> I realised it was a very Australian expression and I wanted to know a little bit more about it. So I went diving into the dictionary and there is a strong theory associated with who was the original Freddie. Uh, it's linked to the bushranger, Ben Hall, who was causing havoc uh, around the Forbes area of New South Wales around the 1860s. And there was an English baronet called Sir Frederick Pottinger. So this was a real historical character. This this Frederick, this particular Freddy, <laughs> really existed. He was flesh and blood, Sir Frederick Pottinger. Uh, he is authentic, but he is also most bamboozled by Hall. Could not catch him, didn't know where he was, consequently was running in circles trying to catch the bushranger. Uh, it would seem a very likely theory that uh, Sir Frederick was blind Freddy, uh, as hearsay would have insisted. However, there is a principal flaw with this theory. Because Ben Hall met his end in 1865. And the first citation, the first written citation of Blind Freddy occurred in 1946. But that's like 90 years later or so. <laughs> that's right. And uh, even though the folk etymologists are very keen on Pottinger being Blind Freddy, I think even Blind Freddy could see that there's a big problem with this theory. A great story, though. Also. That's still a great phrase, too, Blind Freddy. Thank you, David. Pleasure. Let's have a look at our scores. And Paul is on five, Johanna on 18, and we're heading for some more letters, which, uh, Johanna, you're going to choose, please. Can I please have a consonant? Thank you. R. And a vowel. E. A consonant. M. A vowel. A. Another consonant. D. And a consonant again. P, a vowel, I, a consonant, V, and a vowel, please. And last letter, O. Thanks, Lily. Here's the clock. of that lot, Johanna? <laughs> I got a five. Five for you, Paul? Five for me. Let's begin with yours. Avoid. And yours, Johanna? Drove. We are getting some solid fives here, David. <laughs> we are, but possibly a little bit of uh, end of week fatigue is creeping in. There were quite a few sevens in there and uh, two eights that I found as well. Uh, if your wages are drastically improved, which is one eight, you may well end up being overpaid, which is another eight. Very nicely found. But Five points each for Paul and Johanna. Let's see how we go with this lot of letters. And uh, Paul, off you go. Can I get a consonant? Thanks, Paul. S. A consonant. R. Consonant. N. Consonant. T. A vowel. U. A vowel. I, a vowel, A, a vowel, another I, and I'll finish with a consonant. And last letter, L. And I'll start the clock.
Max, any better, Paul? A um, bit better. I've got a six. A six is good. What about you, Johanna? Uh, just another five. Sticking with the fives. Yeah, Let's not... start there, please. I got turns. Turns and Paul? Strain. Well, no problem taking the strain, David. No problem with strain. A good six. Um, Insula was the seven that I found. Good stuff. Well done to Paul. Six points. Well, Johanna, you're seven points out in the lead. What number combination would you like? Um, can I get another two large and four small? Thanks, Johanna. That's two large, four small. And starting with the smalls, six, eight, seven, three, and the two large, 150. The target to reach is 460. Let's head there. Two away, Paul? 458. 458 as well. Well done to you. Johanna, you chose, so uh, tell us what you did. I um, added six and three. Six plus three. Then I multiplied it by 50. Five and 50 is 450. And I simply added eight. And add the eight is 458. So, well done. Just two away, Paul, your method? Exactly the same. Exactly the same. Would you just verify that you've, uh, you've done the same thing? Great stuff. Two away, Lily. How did you go with this one? Yeah, I managed to get there. Um, now, 50 by 8 is 400, and we're 60 away, so 3 plus 7 is 10 by 6. 60, add that on, is 460. And there it is, right there. Well done. Nice solution. But Paul and Johanna also did very well, and they scored seven points each. So, our scores at the moment. Paul's on 23, Johanna is on 30, as we're heading for our next break and another word mix for you. It's bale seed. The clue this time, a descending muscle. Back soon. Back soon.